guys, uh, it's Amanda on Tuesday. I'm still here. Long time no see, I know. I'm so sorry I haven't been making videos the past couple weeks, but I have been uh, traveling and I've either been on the road or somewhere where there is absolutely no internet, so I haven't been able to make videos the past couple weeks. So I apologize, but it is 2013. Happy New Year. We all survived the apocalypse. Holla. Um, and so we're ready to start off with a fresh season of Bookish Days. Sorry, I'm like kind of out of frame. Okay, so this week we are doing our top 12 books we read in 2012. However, I don't have 12 books that I read in 2012 uh, that I would give like five fantastic, amazing stars to. Um, so these are my top like 10-ish. Um, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, all of these books, by the way, are just books that I thought were amazing, the best of the best, fantastic. Um, this first book is um, Honorable Mention because I haven't finished it yet. This is The Diviners by Libba Bray. I'm only about 100 pages in, so I started in 2012, but I didn't finish it. So I can't include it in the countdown, but so far I'm absolutely loving it. I think it's brilliant. It's incredibly intelligent, and I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, so this gets an honorable mention, and it will probably be in my 2013 best books. And then on number... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Number eight, I've only got eight books, um, is The Miseducation of Cameron Post by Emily M. Danforth. And this book is fantastic. It's about a girl, um, and it's set in the late 80s in a rural, somewhere in the Midwest, but a very small town. And it's about a young girl's sexual awakening and kind of realizing that she's attracted to girls and not boys. And it's from that perspective, so it starts off when she's only like 12 and goes until she's about 15 or 16. Um, she's also an orphan. Her parents were killed in a car crash. Um, so this is not a spoiler. It happens like in the first five minutes. Um, so she's, um, aye, aye, aye. What am I saying? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, so she's basically, you know, in the 1980s, being gay was very, even more so frowned upon than it is now. And um, her family finds out, and they send her to a de-gayifying Jesus camp. And this book is great because I think it would be very easy to paint her family and um, Christianity kind of in general as this one-sided, like, evil villain kind of character. But it's extremely balanced. Um, the, the Christian characters, you understand. You understand why they are doing what they're doing. And, and it's not just from, like, this evil place. It's And you understand where they're coming from, and you also understand where Cameron's coming from. And, and it's just a really well-balanced book, and in my opinion, very important for, you know, gay and LGBT YA literature. And I thought it was really fantastic. Um, number seven is Me and Daryl and the Dying Girl by Jesse Andrews. Um, I actually have two teens with cancer books on my list and this one I read immediately after um, Salt in Our Stars and this is fantastic. First, The reason I read it is because I thought this cover was just brilliant um, and it's a very great book. Um, I think it just does a lot of really good things. Now you can't take it, it, it goes deeper than face value. At face value this is just a book about a couple of boys being stupid teenage boys and like screwing around and just being dumb. But I think it's got a much deeper message than that. And um, it talks about dying and, and, and long-term illness and uh, children with illnesses in a way that I think that says a really good message. And um, I don't know, it really made me think a lot. Beneath all the silliness and the humor and stuff, there's a really good story there too. So I definitely recommend this, um, maybe not for people who can't get past swearing and, you know, potty humor. There's kind of that a, a little bit in there, a lot of bit in there, actually. But it, I really liked it, so. Okay, number six is Velveteen by Daniel Marks. Now, I am a failure because I have not reviewed this yet on my channel or on my blog. Um, but I read this, actually was lucky enough to read an advanced copy in April. Um, I think... What I'm going to do is now that I have my finished copy, I'm going to, in 2013, 
reread this and to do a review then. I really liked it a lot. I thought the main character, Velvet, was fantastic. She's really the reason why I enjoyed this book so much. And I feel like I'm really hoping that we get more of her story because I feel like she's an extremely deep character. And, you know, we've only just started peeling the onion layers back. I feel like there's a lot more to her um, that I really want to explore. And I want to see where she goes with her afterlife. Um, I thought this was really great. And that's really why I liked it so much. I would have liked more bone saw, maybe a little less purgatory, a little more bone saw. Um, but I think Danny is a fantastic writer. I think he's a unique writer, especially a unique YA writer. Um, and I hope he does more. I thought I hope he he uh, in his next YA book, whatever that is. I hope he just takes it further, and 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 you know breaks more YA barriers and goes outside of the box because I think he's the perfect person to go outside of the YA horror box. And I think that I just, I feel very hopeful for his future books. Um, I think this is a fantastic YA debut and I'm really excited to see what he comes up with next. So Danny, if you ever watch this, you can, you're awesome. <laughs> okay. The next book, um, Book five is The Immortal Rules by Julie Kagawa. Um, I have read the entire Iron Face series, so and um, uh, sorry guys, something in my eye. Yikes! Um, I really liked it a lot. I love her writing style, and I have to say though, I think I like The Immortal Rules even more. It's about vampires, but it's more of like horror vampires. It's like Daybreakers, kind of. If anyone's seen that Ethan Hawke movie, I feel like I'm the only one, but it really is great for this. And um, there's also some really interesting religion stuff. It's almost like Daybreakers and like the Book of Eli and just just a lot of great post-apocalyptic kind of stuff. Um, a lot of really good good things going on in this novel. And I'm I love the main character, Allison. I think she's real badass. Um, I can't wait to see more. I hate the cover redesign, though. And I know that this is kind of sort of whitewashing because um, Allison is Japanese. But, you know, I really prefer this cover. This cover, seriously, doesn't this look like a CW uh, TV show? Because I think it does. I think that this could be the TV poster for a CW series. And I think it would make a great TV show. Um, this is a very exciting, very well done, very interesting premise. I cannot wait for the next book in the series. I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Um, when that comes out, I will probably be rereading this because um, I really liked it. Okay, now number four is an older book, but I am tardy to the party on this one, and that's Ooh, Graceling by Kristen Kishore. I thought this was fantastic. It was exciting. It was well done. Um, this is high fantasy with with just everything you need for it. Um, I think this is a great introduction for younger readers into high fantasy. Uh, it's got great geography, which in my opinion, if you if your high fantasy doesn't have good geography, then it's not good high fantasy. Because I really feel like all historical fantasy kind of stuff is based on good geography. Um, but I really loved Cat's Son. I really loved Poe. I loved how she's not afraid to put some sex in there. Um, I love how sexually liberated Cat's Son is. I love how much she grows in this book. Um, I think it's fantastic. I cannot say enough good things about Graceling. Um, the beginning is a little slow. That's about all I can say that's negative. But it picks up, and the ending is phenomenal. I cried a little bit at the ending. I just really enjoyed this. Um, I really need to read Fire. It's back there somewhere on, on that shelf back there. So I really like this one a lot. Okay, number three is The Fall in Our Stars by John Green. I mean, come on. It's going to be on this list. I think it's on everyone's list. I really love this book. I thought it was great. It really hit home for me. I spent a lot of my teenage years in the oncology, uh, hematology floor of Children's Hospital, not because I had cancer, I had another blood problem, but I was around a lot of kids with leukemia. So 
uh, this really resonated with me and, and kind of my experience, even though my experience was nowhere near as severe as Hazel and Augustus, I, I could really relate to them. And I thought that was great. And a, I, I did go Hankler fishing and I got a J Scribble with the Hankler fish, which I thought was fantastic. I ended up ordering another copy and I gave that to my mom. Uh, I really liked it a lot. I thought it was very good. I could definitely see this as a movie. With all the success that John has been getting through this book, I would not be surprised if a movie were to happen. I mean, it's been named one of the, the best books of 2012 in so many wonderful publications like Time Magazine and things like that. And not of YA books, just of books of, of 2012 in general, which is a huge compliment. Um, and John deserves it. It's a fantastic book. Um, and we need more YA books like this. So I think it's great. And everyone should read it if you haven't already. I don't know how many people out there who haven't, but you definitely should. Okay, number two is Cinder by Marissa Meyer. This was one of the very first books that I read in 2012, and it is still one of the best books I read in 2012. I adored Cinder. I thought it was so, just so good. It's so smart, such a clever adaptation of such a well-known story. And even though I knew what was going to happen, I was still surprised by how things turned. And I cannot wait for Scarlet. Um, I will be rereading this probably this month to prepare for Scarlet coming out in February. Uh, but it's great. And I'm pretty sure this is a signed copy, too. It says, May the Glass Slipper Always Fit. So that's pretty cool. Um, this is great. Marissa is a very nice person, too. She's I got to hear her speak at a book signing. Um, honestly, there's nothing bad about Cinder, in my opinion. It's one of the best books of the year, the best debut of 2012, hands down. Um, very fantastic. And then number one book that I read this year uh, kind of has a two books, but one was a reread, and that is Daughter, Smoke, and Bone, and Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor. This is easy, quickly becoming one of the best series I have ever read. Um, I reread this one. I read this last year, and it was one of the best books I read last year. And then uh, I read Days of Blood and Starlight, and guys, it is so good. I just, oh, it's heartbreaking. It's it's so intense. Um, it's not... For younger audiences, that's for sure. There's definitely some more mature themes going on here. Um, I cannot wait to see how this ends. I think that there's just some fantastic things going on in here um, with forgiveness and love and um, just war and, and how it affects people and how our choices can create a domino effect that can spiral out of control. And I just, I want to reread it already. I read it just a couple months ago, and I already want to reread it. It's beautiful. The writing is fantastic. Lainey Taylor is one of the best writers I've ever read. It's just wonderful. Um, this is a great book, and I highly recommend that, this series. So those are the best books that I read in 2012. If you guys want to make a video response or post in the comments down below what books you read um, and which ones you thought were the best from the year, um, I'm always excited to hear what people think. So please post in the comments down below, and I will see you guys next week. Bye!